Hi, I'm Lynn Morgan, your Slipper Shod Pastor. Today I'm Sneaker Shod. I'm here in the church office and I'm accompanied by your hard-working church dog, Roxy. And today I'm thinking about the topic of forgiveness. In particular, I'm thinking about how one receives forgiveness. What do you have to do to be forgiven? Well, you know, it depends almost entirely on who you're asking. We know people for whom asking for forgiveness is a waste of breath because they're scorekeepers. They're going to hold on to the debt you owe them forever and ever, and they're going to hold the wrong that you've done over their head, and nothing you do is going to change that. They get a sense of power and satisfaction over it. They nurture and, and caress the grudge forever and ever. Most of us, I think, will grant forgiveness to one another if we see signs of sorrow, contrition, regret for the wrong that's been done, and we wouldn't mind hearing an apology or a request for forgiveness. Saints, on the other hand, are likely to forgive you before you even know that you need to be forgiven. You've done something that's hurt their feelings, injured them, excluded them, whatever, and you were, did it callously, mindlessly, unintentionally, or you did it out of a fit of anger and a loss of control, but you weren't even mindful of it. But they felt the hurt, and they released the hurt. And so you've been forgiven before you even know that you did something that needed forgiving. You know why they call them saints? Because they're like God. Because that's how God's forgiveness works. God's forgiveness doesn't happen now and then, here and there, depending on this or that. God's forgiveness is of the very nature of God. You know, God was not innovating when God sent Jesus to be born and to live among us and to die at the hands of Pontius Pilate and to rise again. God didn't suddenly become forgiving of people's sins in Jesus. God always has been, is, and always shall be a God of love and mercy and forgiveness. Scripture reminds us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's love that's poured out even in Jesus' blood isn't contingent upon stuff we do. It's the nature of God. But what good will it do us if we're closed off to receiving it. And the best way I know of to be closed off to receiving the forgiveness of God is to withhold forgiveness from others. I think that's what Jesus means in that statement at the heart of the Lord's Prayer that we say so often. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our sins in the way that we forgive the sins of others. Again, I don't think that that's conditional in the sense that God is sitting in heaven with a tally book and saying, Aha! I notice that Lynn has not yet forgiven the hearing aid eaten cat, and so I'm not going to forgive him. No, it doesn't work that way. But when we fail to forgive the people who have wronged us, we harden our hearts. And we actually lose faith. We lose the belief that someone else could forgive us because we know so well that we are not forgiving the people who have wronged us. But when we release the sins, small, large, and some really horribly unimaginable, when we release them, when we cease to seek revenge, when we no longer hold them as a treasured possession, something that we caress and, and treasure as a memory of the wrong that's been done to us and keep the resentment. When we let that go, our hearts open up and suddenly we can experience the love that we have received from God, the life-changing power of forgiveness, that radical acceptance of us, that despite our brokenness, our backwardness, our selfishness and our sin, God loves us and always has.